Um, so I think one thing to say is I don't think any two of those shows got commissioned in exactly the same way, which I'm sure is something that sort of we'll, we'll come to later. Um, uh, well, I don't know what else to tell you in production. I think the, 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 the real, I'm sure you said, you know, that speaks volumes. It's quite a, a, a large... Um, quite a, a diverse set of programmes there. Um, well, let's move on then. Uh, Rob, do you want to tell us about Discovery? Yeah, so I'm one of the commissioning team and producing team and development team over in Chiswick for Discovery Networks International. My primary focus is factual programmes that air all over the Discovery Networks, which at last count I think is 220 countries and territories around the world in 45 languages. And I think we have global reach to 2.8 billion people. That basically means that many people access Discovery, Animal Planet, Eurosport, one of the networks we own. Um, so it seems like a lot, but we have a core team in Chiswick that we focus on commissioning shows that will air in the factual space, primarily on the Discovery Channel, which is slightly male skewing, in all of those countries around the world. So we try not to focus too much on one location, or one nationality, or one particular set of stories. Um, as I said, I look after factual, but we'll show the real in a second. That also includes some factual entertainment and lifestyle, um, which some of my colleagues do, um, and I can always talk about that. So, that. All of those shows in that reel, they were developed by producers like Paul, other, lots of UK indies, in fact, some international, some US, but they were all developed from the very outset to air internationally, so they weren't developed just for a UK market or US market from the outset, they were going to air in all of our countries all around the world, which can be a challenge because how do you make one show, one format translate internationally? How does it appeal to cultures, nationalities equally as well? Um, but so far, it's all going very well. There's been some big successes. Well, as Paul just mentioned, there's one of his upcoming shows in that reel as well. Uh, which one was that? That was Engine Addict um, with Jimmy DeVille, which I believe is. Is that September? Yes. Is it September? Yeah, September, October. Yeah. yeah. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I actually only found out a couple of days ago. <laughs> don't know why it just stuck there. Um, the, the important thing to know about Discovery as well is that um, it's the formats that, that really work for the channel and as a brand. Tom, and I, you work with um, current affairs and news. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Yes, yeah, so as I'm only saying, uh, we're, my department's responsible for commissioning dispatches um, for Unreported World and also um, Channel 4 News, which we commission um, as a sort of entity on its own, and then they commission films themselves um, from uh, indies and individuals as well. Um, and it's really quite a broad range of, of, of subject matter that we cover, everything from, you know, we've done a, a film quite recently about Sports Direct, um, that populist end, um, right down to um, political investigation, as you mentioned, um, Politicians for Hire, just an example. That we commission a massively broad range of, of films, both in terms of subject matter and also tone and style. I mean, uh, in there, there's everything from a very documentary style to access films um, to a much more traditional current affairs investigation. Um, and I think we like to think, and I, I, it's worth mentioning that I've also been commissioning with the documentaries department and with features um, at Channel 4. And I think we're trying to adopt a slightly looser approach to genres uh, and not say, well, look, you know, this film belongs in current affairs, this film belongs in documentaries. And I, I think Sometimes that can be an impediment to um, people pitching. There's a lot of confusion about which commission you should go to, and <coughs> frankly, you should try and uh, establish relationships with with people. You know, I mean, obviously, if it's an entertainment idea, don't bring it to me. But so there are some kind of, of walls that, that exist. Um, but uh, uh, in in terms of factual, actually, you know, there's a lot of overlap between genres, and I think I think um, some of those walls could come down, and, and things could be a lot clearer. For um, some really good content there, really strong content. Um, I'll hand over now to Jane Merkin, BBC Documentaries Commissioning. Um, so I've been in commission at BBC for just over six months, so I imagine there'll be a lot of questions that I'm asked that I won't be able to answer, and I apologise. Um, we, uh, we kind of have a fantastic range, kind of in the same way as Channel 4, we do have an enormous range, we are commissioning across the four channels. Um, so everything from Great British, British Bake Off comes under um, documentaries to 
the recent slow TV series on BBC4 where you could sit on a canal boat um, with a fixed camera for two hours. Um, and what that means is that we also commission everything in between. I think, again, what is very interesting at the moment, as Tom was saying, is the lines between genres are very, very blurred. And something, for example, great which they call them people go, well, what's that doing in documentaries? But it is. I can't explain that. I don't think anybody can. Um, and I think, again, as Tom said, never be frightened of coming and pitching to, to us. All we can say is no. Um, I don't, I don't, I, I mean, I understand because usually I work as an independent um, executive producer. And when you don't know people, it's quite scary just lobbing things into the ether. But I think that's what we're there to do as commission editors. And as BBC, we absolutely encourage that. Well, I absolutely encourage that. I'm sure all the other commissioners will hate them now. Um, I think it's also a really, really interesting time at the BBC because we are, as usual, going through huge change. We're going through change in documentaries commissioning. We've got a new head coming, Patrick Holland, who will be starting very soon. Um, and that is going to be a, a new and exciting time for documentaries because he is going to have his own idea and vision of where we go from, from where we are now. I think also, um, as people may have been reading in broadcast um, this week, there, there are a huge number of changes in terms of what the BBC does, and that does impact on commissioning. So I do think it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time because we've got two fairly new channel controllers, or three really, very new cat channel controllers, who are bedding in. So actually, what is being asked for is changing, and the emphasis is changing. Um, but we have the whole range of popular observational documentary at eight o'clock, things like power shop wars, traffic cops, um, more formatted programmes like um, 24 Hours in the Past, big single films that really um, are react, react to events like Baby P, The Untold Story, or Guilty by Association. Um, and then kind of attention grabbing singles that play at 10.35. So Millionaire Basement Wars was a recent one. Um, BBC Two, again, there's a huge range of observational documentaries um, that have been very successful and there's always interest in more. Um, so things like a very British airline, sorry, I, I have to refer to my notes all the time because I can't remember everything. Um, Claridge's. Harley Street, or recently The Detectives, which played across three consecutive nights. Um, I think it's interesting that the control of BBC Two is doing is thinking differently about scheduling, and that makes a difference in how we commission and what we commission. Um, there's also looking for um, kind of the big single films, like Protecting Our Parents and, and uh, new film that's coming up about domestic violence. Um, and also a film that I'm looking after, which is about Tottenham, based around David Lowry's uh, constituency surgery, which will show Tottenham in, in, in quite an unexpected and surprising way. But you wouldn't, I think a lot of people would think that's naturally a 10.35 BBC One, and actually they want it on two. Um, and then BBC Three, even though I know people say, well, it's going to be going online, that has, as I'm sure you all know, been delayed. So there is an appetite and a desire to commission more things now. The kinds of series that they're looking at, and it is most more series, things like uh, Life and Death Row, Our War, Don't Call Me Crazy, really impactful, serious documentary that actually does astonishingly well for an audience that people think have an attention span of a neck. <laughs> they, they, those are the ones that really, really resonate. It's about the subject. I probably won't talk really about BBC Four because the possibilities for commissioning in documentaries is so tiny that I would suggest you concentrate on the other three. But also think about iPlayer, which I think a lot of people forget. Um, 
because it's now commissioning much, much more in its, in its own right. So I'm hoping quite a number of you would have seen Bitter Lake, Adam Curtis's last film. That was a really, that, that was a new departure and seen as incredibly successful and they want more of that kind of thing. So think more widely um, and think digital is, is the other thing. Even when you're thinking about pitching ideas, don't just pitch a single documentary. Think how else it might have a life and there's real appetite. Uh, Peter Davey is Entertainment Commissioner at ITV. Okay, so uh, there's four of us that do the job. Um, we are responsible for all entertainment across all channels, predominantly ITV, one, but we don't call it that anymore. It's just ITV, one the channel. Um, but two, three, and four, one's the bulk of it. The job essentially splits into two halves. Um, half the time you're taking pitches, and you take pitches from anyone and everyone. Um, and so there's four of us doing it. Um, so you say no a lot, but obviously the prize if you, if you get something commissioned is huge. Uh, some accounts are the So that's half the job. The other half of the job is looking after existing programmes. So we all, the show's split up amongst us. One of the things ITV insists on is that we go to every single live show. So every time there's a studio, we have to be there. So we're there. Um, and most of the pre recorded shows, unless you have a clash, so as a commissioner, you can go to every single show. Um, the other thing I would say about ITV, which you should know, is all the commissioning is done on the 21st floor, and everybody sits in the same area. So daytime, factual, the channels, uh, drama, us, and Peter Finch are all in the same area. So it's quite lean, which hopefully means we can you know, respond quite quickly, um, which is, I think it's important. And I've only been upstairs, I've only been up there a year and a half. I was a producer before that for a long period. And interesting, all we'll the talk about the genres changing, I think is relevant. I started in factory, I started making documentaries and kind of went for where more money was. No, I've been, <laughs> um, I've been, I've been out factory to reality. Um, sorts of, I did things like the mole and playing straight using the Geek Channel 4. The key to all those shows, as with all shows, is it's all about storytelling. So the factual um, uh, background was, was crucial. Every single show, every century, you've got to tell the story. And then went into doing kind of big shiny floor stuff. Um, and a lot of it's talent management, and now we're going to commissioning, which is kind of very much the same, same thing. Let's try and keep our answers concise now so we can squeeze in as many questions as possible because I'm sure you're dying to ask questions. But I have one of my own, which I was going to lead to the end, but I'm going to ask it now. Um, it's really, can I get some pitching tips for you? Because this, this session is also about, not only about de uh, demystifying the commissioning process, how do, we, how do we do it, who do we approach? You know, you clearly have to know the reason why these guys are here talking to you is to help you and just give you an idea of what they do. So in your mind, when you're approaching commissioning and the process, you really need to have a very clear, defined idea of what your program idea is, but also who is it for? Who are your audience? And who does it work with? Does it sit better with Discovery or BBC? You know, there's numerous channels who have different um, audiences, so you sh really need to think about that. So I want to just start, can I ask each of you really quickly, just uh, maybe one or two points, um, what kind of pitching tips would you give people? How can they pitch, or what advice would you give them if they do get the opportunity to pitch? Peter, I'll start with you, go on. Um, uh, I'd say be passionate, know the, you know, know the idea, know, know the broadcast as well, we just said that's important. You know, you know, so which is another puppet show, because I might be going to do it, or another scene judge show. Um, it doesn't have to be massively worked out, but one thing I would say if you're kind of a freelancer is it does help. We, don't, we wouldn't discriminate against people, but it does help if you've got the backing of a production company. Because what that means to, for us is that you've sold the idea to them, they've backed it enough to, to bring it in. Um, uh, and to, to feel passionate enough to make it. But it doesn't have to be massively worked out. 
one of my all-time favourite shows came from, and it doesn't have to be sophisticated, it came from uh, somebody who did the phone at the production company I was at, just had a genius top line idea. They'd written the Bible like that, which was gibberish. I mean, it's unbelievable, so we threw the Bible away and made the show, and it ended up on ITV. Uh, and we just worked together. I, I also think it's really important to work with people who come up with the ideas because they're the most passionate. Um, so you don't need massive expertise. Jane? Um, I, th I think the, the biggest issue for me is the people who pitch ideas that are absolutely, totally wrong for BBC documentaries. So I can't underline it enough. Know who it is that you're pitching to and not to. There is a lot of information out there, so find it. It's, it's my first big thing. And secondly, don't, you don't need to write a novel. In fact, don't write a novel. Because it may well be that the idea that you've been sitting on and working up for the past 12 months has, or has you know, was commissioned the week before it arrived in my inbox. So my advice to people is a single page. A single, well-argued, passionate, intelligent page that gives you an idea of what it is. And it's a simple yes or no. Let's take it further. Write me a treatment, and we'll take it from there. So I, you know, I actually think make the connection with the with the commissioners. Send them the paragraph or the page. Keep it simple. Don't make it your life's work because ninety-nine times out of a hundred. It will be entirely wasted. Just, have, just one thing on that, just to echo that point. I say to researchers in development, even if you come up with a left field idea which you think is brilliant, you have to assume there's at least six or seven other people at that time with exactly the same idea, which is why you should move fast and kind of not invest hours and hours and hours writing up just to get it in. Um, because, because there's only a certain amount of ideas, and, and you have to assume it's a good one for somebody else or a number of people doing the same thing. And just one other thing never ever say you've got the access to something when you haven't. <laughs> yes. That's, a, that's <laughs> a big disaster. You will get caught out, so really good advice. Tom? Yeah, I think all of that's good. I mean, um, uh, the more succinct you can be, the better. I think being quick is good because um, I often see people have spent hours and days and months on things uh, that which they come to us with, and I could have told them, you know, of the month before that we're already doing it. Um, so actually, you know, a, a short paragraph. Um, with us, um, it's not probably a great <coughs> idea to pitch us things that are massive in the news because there are companies we have output deals with who, who we do work with on those sorts of things. It's generally more left field niche ideas that, that other people wouldn't know about that involve a bit of access or something that you can bring personally um, or as a company that, that no one else can. Um, and often with ours, it's actually just stuff that makes you angry. Um, if it makes you angry, it's generally going to make a, a good film. And the other tip I give is just watch a lot of television because that is, that is basically the research as to knowing you know, who commissions what. Um, the number of times that even companies come to us with, I, mean, I heard it the other day, um, you saw that clip up there, the football hate on the terraces, and they'd seen something in the, in the newspaper about uh, racism in football, and just pitched as basically the film we'd made 12 months ago. Um, and you had to politely write back and say, well, you know, we've kind of done that. Um, and I've even had one pitched on the day of transmission, um, <laughs> the same because they'd seen the press surrounding our film, but they hadn't got to the bottom to see the bit that pointed to watch the film that night. So um, that can be a bit embarrassing. So it, it, I mean, don't sit in a in a room and write stuff without knowing what else is going on around you. I mean, Tom clearly said there, there's a key element to what Channel 4 do for news and current affairs. They have output deals, and um, these are with indies. Um, and, yeah, so, but does this mean that if you've got an idea that you can't... No, not at all. It, it means that um, we work with ITN a lot and we work with Blakeway. Um, it means that we have sort of centres of excellence and, and, and people who we know can deliver um, what are quite generally quite potentially um, risky legally films that, that could end up, up in court. And, um, it doesn't mean you can't go to them with your idea, or we, we wouldn't put you with them. All I was saying was that um, with, with a film like um, the one you saw Matt Fry uh, 
um, doing about MH17, you know, you're you're not going to um, be able to turn as an individual and turn around a film like that in five days in the way that ITN would, and that's a big story in the news. Um, the things that tend to come from freelancers um, and from smaller companies tend to be um, based on a piece of access that you know you can get that no one else can get, uh, not on the big story that is dominating the headlines, unless you can find a different angle to it. But that doesn't happen very often. Yeah. Well, I'm probably going to echo everything that the other guy has said already, but the first thing I'd say is always look into the channel you're pitching to, read everything you can about who the commissioners are, what they're commissioning, really read into the schedules, because we'll never commission something derivative. If we've already got it in the schedules, we won't want a new iteration of or something similar to. Um, and we get that surprisingly often. Uh, another very simple one, which I've had a lot of times, Companies will pitch an idea, quite often in a treatment stage, and on the front page it will have a nice logo for the broadcaster. Sadly, that broadcaster isn't Discovery. Um, and we like to feel a little bit unique and a little bit loved, so don't bring us an idea that you've pitched Nat Geo and leave Nat Geo's logo on it. It's a very simple one, but it really it happens a surprisingly large amount. Um, and yeah, also just to start with, if you're if you're a freelancer, kind of out on your own with access with a story, absolutely come and talk to us. We aren't going to just say, no, we won't talk to you because you're on your own. If it's a great idea, great access, great story, we'll either pair you up with a producer that we already work with, or say to you, is there someone you've worked with previously that you think you could kind of marry up with on this? Um, because it comes down to the story and the access. If it's great, it's great. Um, I think there's a couple of other ones. Always going actually going back to what people say. It's all about stories at the end of the day. So whether it's current affairs and kind of whether it's discovery, whether it's factual entertainment, it's about telling stories. It has to be compelling. If you aren't asking yourself why we're doing it every paragraph, you need to be. Um, it's just it comes down to having a succinct pitch that you can really clearly, concisely pitch to us, ideally with an opening paragraph. Fantastic. I mean, you know. In what Rob is saying there, and what everyone is echoing so far, is attention to detail is key. You don't want to make yourself look like an idiot, because that in invalidates your idea in a way. So really do be clued up about the, your, your ideas. If you're passionate enough about them, you know, invest the time in them to make them happen, because that's what you want at the end of the day. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask um, Paul, because... Paul, you work with a lot of different broadcasters because with Maverick TV, you know, they're an independent production company, so you work with everybody. Um, is, it yeah, quite e <laughs> is it quite easy when you're knocking at the door saying, hi, I'm Paul, you know, I've got great ideas, will you listen to me? Um, do, do they just generally... Said, yeah. <laughs> I think you should I try it. Start. I think you should try it. Um, no, I mean, we, we are in a different position. I'm in a different position from these four guys because I'm on the other side of the, 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 the table pitching the ideas. Um, I mean, I think I'm lucky that I work for an established company and hopefully a sort of reputable company. So, you know, when we do contact commissioning editors we haven't worked with before, for the most part, we, you know, we get quite warm sort of reception. Um, but I think it's then incumbent on us to go in with the kind of ideas that they would want to buy from us. And I think the, the, the point that, one of the points for me is just as, as, as you guys were saying, think about the channel. I think we spend a lot of time thinking about if we pitch this particular idea to a broadcaster and they ask why would Maverick make that show as opposed to another company, we have to have an answer to that question. And sometimes it's sort of obvious because it fits in very well with the kind of track record of shows that we make. So we make a lot of medical programs, for instance. This medical program is a very good reason why ours. If it's a, because we have access to a particular institution for a documentary or we have an amazing piece of talent, then it's obvious why it's us because we, we have some ownership of that. But sometimes it's not that clear, you know, sometimes we have an idea. Actually, you look at it and you think, well, you know what, any one of the you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 companies could make this programme. And I think we're always striving for something where we make a commission and think, if I want this, Maverick's going to bring something a bit different and special to it. And I think for freelancers coming to Maverick and trying to get us on board, I think it's really important to look at the shows that we make and kind of have a think about, is Maverick the company where I would stand the best chance of this idea going forward and going to a broadcaster and getting commissioned? Because people often bring us great ideas, and I look at them and I think, do you know what? I think there are, better, there are companies better place to get that commission. I could pitch it, and it would stand the sort of a small chance to get a commission. But you could take it to another, you know, another company who specialises in that kind of programming, 
and you would stand a much better chance. So I think it's really worth, if you've got ideas you want to take to production companies, doing your homework and looking for companies who make programs that sort of share some kind of kinship with, with your idea. Um, uh, I think then in terms of how, how you pitch, um, uh, we have we have sort of a bit of a mantra at Maverick about pitching fewer, better ideas. I think, you know, we, we've been in meetings before, we've taken the list of kind of 10, 15 top line ideas, and you pitch them, there's a rejection, you pitch the next one, there's a rejection, you pitch the next one, and you can sort of see the commission editor to think, oh my God, do they actually really believe any of these ideas are great, or are they just reading off the list? And I think you fairly quickly learn that actually what, what commissioning editors want are ideas that, that, that you really believe in, um, uh, and that you're not just sort of a chancing it with. Um, and I think, you know, we've all had the experience of pitching lots and lots of ideas with people's eyes glazing over. So now we sort of, you know, we really interrogate each idea we're thinking about pitching. And before we go into broadcasters, kind of knock a lot of them out. So we might start, you know, if, we, if I've got a meeting in three weeks time with a broadcaster, I might start the long list, but by the time I get to the broadcaster, I've only got kind of three or four ideas in that list. And they're ideas that I, I genuinely believe will make really good programs. Um, and again, I'd say it's a similar thing if you're a freelancer going to a company. You know, nobody wants to sit there hearing sort of 15 ideas kind of reeled off. Um, and then there's a kind of, there's a, there's a sort of cliche, it certainly was around when I started working on TV about, you know, if you can't sell an idea in two lines and it's pretty not a good idea, I think that whole, that, that's certainly true of kind of formatted shows. And it is a bit of a cliche, and in some ways it's not true 100% of the time, but I think it is really useful. Um, when we're pitching, we're often thinking, if a broadcaster ends up commissioning this show, eventually there'll be a trailer for the show, and that will be 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute long. Um, and you think about how many words you can fit into 30 seconds or a minute of TV, or how many words you can fit onto the electronic program guide on TV. And we're trying to pitch something that's almost kind of close to that end point of the broadcaster selling the idea to the viewer as possible. Um, you know, when we pitch something, the, sort of the first words out of our mouth, hopefully, are, you know, um, the thing that makes the broadcaster, makes these guys kind of go, well, I can see how I position that for the viewer. Um, I'm not sure we achieve it very often, but that's always the sort of the ambition. And then the final thing I think, I'd say if you're coming to us with an idea, is if it's a kind of character-based idea, um, you know, if it's, about, if it's about a specific group of people or individual, you sort of need to be able to see the people. 